Have you ever wondered how all the chemical elements are made? Then join me as we are lifting all the Stardust secrets to understand the cosmic origin of the chemical elements. We talked a lot about the lighter elements that are made in fusion processes in the cores of stars. But what about all the other elements from the bottom half of the periodic table? We haven't really talked about those yet. Let's do that! What we need are so-called seed nuclei. We have an iron nucleus here. And um, if we are in a situation where there is a strong neutron flux available, and we'll talk about where that happens in a sec, um, then if we have little neutrons here, and this seed nucleus is getting bombarded with these neutrons, then it's going to swell and turn into a much larger nucleus that is radioactive and neutron rich and it's an isotope so it has lots of neutrons in it and uh, what's happening then because this is radioactive it doesn't like to, to um, stay in, in this, um, in this um, way it will uh, what we call beta decay which is just a fancy word of saying that all these uh, neutrons here um, are being converted, or a good fraction of them, um, into protons. And so we end up with a stable element uh, of that, that's much larger than, than this, this um, original one, the, the iron, or it could also be a carbon atom. So this is the basic idea of how all the other heavy elements are made. An example would be barium here, or uranium. Uranium-238 is, is technically not a stable element. But its half-life is 4.7 billion years. So for us humans, that's, <laughs> that's pretty stable. But uh, on cosmic time scales, it is not. But it, if we want to consider it as stable, it would be the heaviest element um, that, that we have on Earth that's, that's long lived. And so um, they're all made by this so-called neutron capture process. Neutron capture process. Now, there are um, a few details that, that we should consider, uh, mostly that there are actually two different ways where this neutron, that this neutron capture process can, can happen. Um, one is in a slow way, slow and capture, and uh, uh, the other way is rapid. And uh, that refers to how fast um, and, and over what time scale this neutron bombardment is occurring. And um, in the case of the slow neutron capture, uh, the time scale is about 10,000 years. And what happens is that in evolved red giant stars, um, evolved red giants, uh, in the inner layers, in, the, in, in, in some of the shell layers where the nuclear fusion is, is going on, um, there are secondary nuclear synthesis fusion processes operating. And uh, as a result of that, free neutrons are produced. And so they provide a steady flux of neutrons that um, then get essentially shot onto these um, seed nuclei. And so over the time scale of something like 10,000 years, uh, uh, heavy elements are successively built up. A neutron is added. It turns into a radioactive um, isotope. It decays. And then we have a, a steady one. Um, you add another neutron, it will decay again, and so you kind of build up one by one by one, all the way up to lead. That's uh, the heaviest um, stable, stable element, if you take away thorium and uranium, uh, because they are, are radioactive, as I just mentioned. Now, in the case of the rapid neutron capture, that really requires much more um, energetic and extreme conditions, and what recent uh, research has shown is that uh, a rapid neutron flux uh, only operates in two locations. Uh, one is um, perhaps in, in supernovae. Uh, when, when the iron core collapses at the end of a star's life, it actually um, um, implodes and, and forms a neutron star. So there's a really um, dense neutron star in the middle. That's a compact remnant uh, left over after the supernova. And in the process of making this neutron star, um, there are, of course, lots of neutrons floating around. And they can provide this kind of flux operating on a one to two second time scale. So huge neutron bombardment within a few seconds. 
and um, that can lead up to a very, very fast buildup of a giant radioactive nuclei here that then, then decay. So you have enough seed nuclei, you know, all of them will do room and then slowly decay back to, um, to the different elements that make up the you know, entire um, bottom of the periodic table. Um, another option uh, is a merging neutron stars. So if you take two of these neutron stars and you have them in a binary system where they orbit each other, and, uh, and if this system eventually, uh, or the two stars in the system eventually coalesce and merge, then you also have some kind of firework of, uh, of neutrons, and um, that can also have the, the ra this rapid neutron capture uh, going on. And uh, so, um, we have to add here, so either in, in supernovae or the proto-neutron star, I'm going to abbreviate like that, or in neutron star uh, mergers. Uh, so that's, um, that are all the options. And um, what, what we now want to figure out really is how can we put all this, this theory to the test, right? How can we, how can we observe this? And that's where the, our old stars come, come back into play. Uh, imagine that in the very beginning of, of the universe when, when the first stars emerged and maybe the second generation of stars. So not too much of all the heavy elements was present at that time. And so let's, let's say you have a neutron star merger go off at this very early time. Um, the rapid neutron capture process will occur. All these new heavy elements get spilled into the surrounding and then you form a next generation star from this enriched material. And because um, the universe was very, um, n not too much enriched in, in, in all the other elements, we have this opportunity to observe a clean nucleosynthesis process of this R process. We sometimes abbreviate it rapid with R, so R process. R process. And actually, this here is S process. You could have guessed that. And uh, so, at the earliest times, it is possible um, to to observe the signature of the R process, a clean signature, as well as the S process. Um, that is not possible anymore today. The universe has experienced 13 billion years of chemical evolution, so it's a pretty messy place out there. Uh, and so, if if one more event goes off. It, it, that signature just gets diluted into whatever else is out there already. But at, at the earliest times, we have this chance to find uh, these clean signatures.